Ciao tutti, hello everybody. I'm Tim. Rena is busy in the kitchen cooking up a delicious meal today. Welcome to our channel. As you all know, we have been living here in Piedmont for over 20 years and we are just so much in love with the wine and food of this region. And today, we're going to share with you a visit that we made in late spring to a winery and vineyard in northern Piemonte. After so many years and so many wineries, it's not often that we get blown away by visiting a winery, but this was the case with our visit to Domenico Tapero Merlo in his Vigna del Belvedere in the Canavese. Before we start, just a reminder, please push the subscription button in the lower corner of your screen. This will allow you to receive notifications whenever we make new videos. Rina will be making many, many more cooking videos. She has so many recipes. We have so many more wineries and wine tastings to add, not to mention the multiple festivals we have around here. For example, next weekend we will be going to the fair, the Tartufo Fair in Alba, the big granddaddy of all of them. The Canavese wine area is north of Turin at the entrance to the Val d'Aosta. You can see the circular area ringed by the hills known as the Moranic Amphitheater of Ivrea and formed 900,000 years ago from the large glacier that ran down today's Val d'Aosta, an impressive river of ice 100 kilometers long and 800 meters tall. The glacial moraine deposits form a ring around the amphitheater and it is on these ridges that Albulucci finds its true expression by digging deep into the rocky and sandy soil. Visiting in mid-June and looking at the lush vineyards, you would not realize that the soil is very poor in organic material, consisting of eroded minerals, sand and rocks, a tribute to the viticultural skills of Domenico, who maintains an organic and biodiverse vineyard with a minimal cultivation, grass and herb cover, almost no spray. It's most unusual at this time of year to see a vineyard canopy without the blue tinge of copper and no sign of mildew. Domenico explains that the rocks give the wine incredible minerality and the herbs lend their aromas into the mix. It is evident in the tasting. The grapes have recently flowered and are starting to grow. They will be picked in late September or early October, depending on the type of wine being made, when they have turned into these fabulous, lush, ripe plants. Belvedere in Italian means beautiful view, and this vineyard lives up to the definition, looking over the alluvial amphitheater below the hills and the old Castella di Lorenza, which is where Domenica's grandfather used to work. The borders are trimmed with stone pillars in the style of the Roman trellising in the nearby Carema district. However, the greatest surprise in store for us is that the tasting room is in the Villino or cottage of Giuseppe Giacosa, the librettist for Giacomo Puccini, the great Italian opera composer. His family owned the vineyard since 700s and it was in these tranquil surroundings that he penned the script for some of Puccini's more memorable, memorable operas such as Madame Butterfly, La Boheme, and Tosca. The cottage is available to rent for anyone who wants to wake up in these beautiful settings. We were led through a tasting of wines by Domenico, starting with the Acini Perduti, a blend of Malvagio and Erbolucci. Then we tasted two Erbolucci Kins, named after Domenico's grandfather, a 2016 and a 2014. Both were poured over an oxygenator into a wide mouth decanter. The older 2014 was at first yellow and bubbly and settled down after a few minutes to an intense straw yellow. And the right service is, is important to have a decanter with a, a big Oh, it's a big canter. Uh, with the Bocca... Yeah, a, a big mouth, a big mouth. Yeah. A Bocca Grande. Large. A Bocca Grande. And uh, this is a, um, uh, um, oxygenation... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I understand. I understand. It's, I, I, I know what it is. I don't know what you call it. <laughs> it, it it's important to... ...produce this effect because... I, I love that you're decay.
È molto importante che si crei questo vortice nel, nel decanter. Se tu guardi, Tim, vedrai che ci sono is a little oh. bit sparkling. Oh. Yeah. Kin in Japanese, kin uh, mean gold. Is the color of wine. Yes. And uh, kin in English uh, is like family. Is like family. family kin yeah. is the nickname, was a nickname of my grandfather. Mm. Mm. And uh, with the only um, uh, word, uh, with one word, three different uh, um, meanings. Yeah. yeah. Domenico is a university lecturer in wine history communications and storytelling as you can tell and he is a real maestro of wine by now we were no longer taking tasting notes only enjoying the wines brindisi with a small lunch that domenico and his assistant martina had laid on suffice to say loads of herbal aromas minerality and balanced acidity the 2016 was fresher but the 2014 had more complexity. Domenica told us that he recently hosted a tasting for Burgundy sommeliers, and they thought that these wines were from their own slopes. We finished with the wine. We finished with the wine which originally attracted us to come here, the Obolucci Caluso Pasito Reserve Bohemian 2019, named after the opera, of course. The grapes are not left on the vines for a late harvest, as with other Facito wines, but harvested early in order to preserve the acidity. Then they undergo sully stoio, stoi. They are left in baskets to dehydrate in the attic over winter, increasing the sugar content and become infected by noble rock botrytis, similar to Tokai and Sautern wines. The grapes are pressed in the following March, aged in oak barrels for at least three years, followed by seven years resting in the bottle. We were reluctant to leave the beautiful settings, but we needed to get home before dark. And of course, we brought back a bottle of each wine to taste and make notes at leisure. A few days later, we had lunch with the Kin 2016, 13.5% alcohol. Note the Moraine Rock that we brought back with us from the vineyard. The kin wines are fermented in controlled temperature steel tanks on their own yeast, aged in 2000 liter oak barrels for 18 months on the lees, settled in a concrete tank, racked and rested in bottles for two years. So we decanted over a honey spoon as an aerator into a wide mouth decanter as recommended. A golden straw color with gentle floral nose and hints of wild herbs, including anise and mentuccia, reflecting the green cover in the vineyards. In the mouth, an attack of minerality from the morenic soil, then softening to a rich and almost creamy wine as it breathes. A complex and well-balanced wine with just the right amount of acidity and no oakiness. Paired with calamari, two ways, sole and gnocchi with crema di piselli. And of course, we had to finish with a glass of Merlot Taparo's 2009 Pasito Reserva with semifreddo and raspberries, amber nectar of the gods. Of course, this wine is excellent to go with cheese too. In the nose, rich husky operatic notes nutty with some vanilla, reminiscent of an aged Palo Cortado sherry or a Tokai Azu. In the mouth, warm, fresh and rich, notes of honey and hazelnuts. The Botrytis is so wonderful, it is pure liquid gold. This wine can last for years. So, Alora, that's it for today. And I think I deserve a little drop of the Bohemian, the liquid nectar from Domenico. Mmm, 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 it is like gold. It slithers down the throat. Ah, wonderful. So, please stay tuned and we will see you later. 
and further videos. Thank you.